Hi guys. So today's video is going to be a non-spoiler book review for Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. This is a Japanese inspired fantasy and a dual perspective story with the occasional other perspective mixed in, but it's not anything overwhelming. I would definitely consider it just dual perspective. And our two main characters are Yumeko and Tatsumi. And Yumeko is a young girl who has been raised by monks. She's lived her whole life in this one particular temple. She really has a very limited view on the world. She has limited experiences, but she is known as something called Kitsune, which she is half human and half fox. She has the ability to shapeshift into a fox and she has some magical abilities that go along with that. She has the ability to create illusions. Our other main character is a young man named Tatsumi and he has a very different upbringing. He was raised with very little kindness, if any at all, and from the time that he was young, he was brought up to be a member of a shadow clan. He's been told his whole life that he is not his own person, that he essentially belongs to this clan. He is a weapon on their behalf, and he's actually been trained with this one particular sword, and the sword has a demon within it that he has to make sure doesn't overpower him, and in order to make sure it doesn't overpower him, he has to limit his emotions all the time. These two characters cross paths when Tatsumi's clan orders him to get this scroll that is being kept hidden at the temple that Yumeko is living at. And unfortunately, due to some bad circumstances, Yumeko promises one of the monks that she will take care of the scroll, she will keep it hidden, and she will seek out help from some other individuals, while Tatsumi has no idea she has the scroll, but he promises to help her find these other individuals, thinking that she's the only way that he can be led to the scroll. Something that I think is worth noting about this story is that most of the setup and getting to know the characters takes place in part one, and they are fairly stationary in part one. They don't really move around. This might make the beginning of the story feel just a tad bit slow for some people, but I didn't personally think that that was a negative whatsoever because even though you don't have the main motivation that's moving the plot forward coming about yet, it did allow us to get to know the characters a little better and the world a little better, and it allowed you to get invested in everything more and have a better understanding, which I greatly appreciated given that Asian-inspired fantasy I don't think is as common as European-inspired fantasy, or at least I haven't read as much of it. So in European-inspired fantasy, you don't realize how many terms you've just come to know and don't really need an explanation for, whereas with this one being Japanese-inspired, there are a lot of terms and a lot of different kinds of creatures and magical things that you're not probably accustomed to, and having maybe a little bit of a slower start allows you to get your head wrapped around all of that better. That said, the thing that I really wanted to make note of is the fact that once things do get moving, it is a traveling story. So you are following the characters as they are on their way from point A to point B. Traveling stories in general can sometimes feel as though they have a sense of randomness, which I think is realistic. If you're traveling from one place to the next and you're going on this adventure, you don't really know what's going to come about along the way. So there are going to be there are going to be encounters that feel as though they are just happening. And if everything feels too formulaic, I think it makes the adventure feel less real. I personally did not find this book to feel formulaic whatsoever. I definitely thought that it had that sense of randomness and I liked that about this book, but other people might feel as though the story is too meandering. The characters' main goals are always still their main goals. They are trying to get to the next place, but along the way, things happen. And sometimes one character, Yumeko, her personality is a bit more innocent and naive and she always wants to help people where Tatsumi's like, oh my gosh, we gotta get going. But sometimes Yumeko's sense of cheerfulness and wanting to make the world better and to help people, that definitely can interrupt their mission a little bit, but their goal is always the same. But it's worth noting because I think for some people, it's gonna make them feel like, oh my gosh, this is just oh, this is just some kind of fluff, and it's, I didn't think it was fluff, but, you know, some people might feel like it's fluff. This particular kind of storytelling does make this feel very episodic, and it definitely feels like it could be adapted into some kind of TV show very, very easily, because often in TV shows, in any kind of anime or any kind of cartoon or anything like that, your characters are always, they have a mission. They usually have something that they're trying to attain, but things get in the way, and that's definitely what this felt like. The various things that do occur along the way are reaffirming our characters' personalities in a lot of ways. Yumeko being so new to the world because she's never really been outside of the temple, she's often in wonder and awe, and she's just enjoying the adventure, where Tatsumi is very reserved and very to himself, and he's not supposed to have any emotions, and so sometimes 
the things that happen along the way make him feel things and he's trying to constantly tell himself like no I'm not trying to I'm not supposed to feel things I'm not supposed to feel anything. Yumeko also happens to be a character that doesn't really have training in fighting so you would expect her to potentially be a damsel in distress which I don't mind it's kind of I feel like nowadays every female character is supposed to be able to kick butt and be awesome but realistically whether you're a guy or a girl some people don't know how to fight and some people are pretty helpless. Yumeko is very kind-hearted and she is always wanting to help people and that doesn't really change regardless of what is happening but she kind of handles her own and I would say there are a good amount of times where even though she doesn't know how to fight she tries to fight and she tries to make an effort and sometimes she saves the day and sometimes she helps somebody or the other person might have died or other people might have died if she hadn't stepped up. Atsumi more often than not is the one that's really getting his hands dirty because he's kind of the muscle between the two of them. I didn't mind. Some people are going to get the impression that oh we just have another girl who can't handle herself and a lot of girls can't handle themselves. I just feel like it's okay. It's okay every now and then to have a story where, where the guy is the muscle. Strength can be found in so many different ways. Just being strong and knowing how to fight isn't the only form of strength. And I think this story really, really shows that Yumeko often actually does help them by being kind because she gets other people on their side. She sometimes by physically making an effort, she does actually help a lot. But sometimes she is the one that by being more being less reserved and being more willing to trust and to love people, she actually is the one that is being brave and the one that's helping them the most. I do think it's probably everybody's first instinct when they hear that the two main characters are a guy and a girl and they have very different personalities and maybe Yumeko can can help him be less emotionally stunted and maybe he can protect her. When you hear this entire plot line, you're probably thinking like, oh, they're gonna fall in love. It's, it's inevitable. It's kind of hard to talk about that without spoiling anything. I just... I want people to know that, of course, these two characters, given that they are going on this adventure together, they're going to influence one another, but it's not a romance story, it's not about them falling in love and then their mission doesn't even matter and their love is all that matters. It's, it's not that. The mission is still always the mission and these two characters are always who they are, but they rub off on each other and it builds from there. There's also a fair amount of humor in this book, so we have the two main characters already being such different personality types, but then we also get some side characters that come into the picture, and their personalities are also very different from our two main characters, and it just kind of sets up some pretty funny moments. The story is in first person with our two main characters, and it's not really a difficult writing style to get into whatsoever. It's quite easy. There are times when sometimes it feels like things are being explained to us maybe a little bit more than I would usually like, but I didn't mind because I think it's very obvious that most of us do not have a great knowledge of Japanese lore and what kinds of things in Japanese culture, what they are and the terms and whatnot. So I kind of needed the explanation and it's something as simple as in any kind of European story, if somebody is a knight, we all know what knights are, so we don't need that explanation. But if you don't know what a yojimbo is, which sorry if I'm saying that totally wrong, but if you're like, I don't know what that is, it's it's like a bodyguard essentially, but you might see that word and have no idea what it is. So getting like a little tiny sentence that tells you is helpful. I'm not gonna pretend for a second that I'm an expert at all when it comes to Japanese lore, but I have played a fair amount of video games that are Japanese inspired. So I've seen some of these terms or I've at least had a, an idea of what they are in my mind and somebody who has no idea whatsoever and has never been introduced to these things, I think they will also find those little bits of explanation helpful. If you've read this book, let me know what your thoughts were on it. And if you haven't read it, but you're interested in it, or if you have any questions about it, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you later. Bye.